Well, I think you know I love Chablis. Absolutely. So I'm already excited about this wine before it's even poured, but now that it's in my glass, <laughs> there's no stopping me. Um, so this is the 2019 vintage of the Chanson Père et Fille Chablis. So we're talking 100% Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. And where we are in the world, uh, Chablis is a region that's known only for Chardonnay. It's the northernmost region within Burgundy, but it's actually closer to the region of Champagne mm -hmm. than it is to the rest of Burgundy Which to, if you to the think south. about it, it, it has a lot of challenges in the growing region, right? That's exactly right. Frost and uh, just... Yes, because it's because it's a cooler region. It's an extreme region for for cultivation. It is. It has a lot of um, hail, mm -hmm. frost. I mean, Mother Nature can be qu quite cruel. So you'll often hear about vintages just being decimated because of exactly the exactly. Weather has. We, we're yeah. going to see a couple of vintages uh, indeed uh, coming in the next few years. There, you'll see quite a, a bit of a decrease in volume because of that. And as a result, there are things that the vintners do in the vineyard sometimes to try to mitigate things like frost, which can be very damaging. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the day, they would burn these things called smudge pots that yes. to, would warm, you know, in between the vines. It's not very environmentally mm -hmm. friendly, so people don't really do that anymore. But there are other things that they do. There's actually even um, heated electrical cables that they'll mm -hmm. put along the trellises to mitigate. But all in all, it's it's a tough place. It's a tough place to, to grow mm -hmm. grapes, but thank goodness they do because it, the results it, are magical. incredible. And once you're hooked, you're hooked on mm -hmm. Chablis, uh, like other regions like Champagne and Burgundy, of course. But this is certainly, mm -hmm. uh, this is human versus nature. Yes. And when human wins, these wines are delicious. All, yes. This is, uh, I mean, a testament to a, lo a longevity in the house, right? 1700s. That's exact. Thank you for reminding mm -hmm. me. Yes, as um, Chanson was formed in, I think, 1750. It was mm -hmm. um, one of the negociants then, and it's one of only six that are still wow. operating That's... today. So it tells you a lot about, they, they should know what they're doing. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> and they definitely have established themselves by now. They have, and <laughs> it's clear in the glass. But other things I like about Chablis, particularly for people who maybe think they don't like Chardonnay because they've had very rich, buttery, oaky mm. versions, is this is not that. To me, this is no. almost closer to like a Sancerre in many ways in terms of the acidity. Absolutely the mouthfeel, but it can only be Chardonnay because of that texture, right? Mm -hmm. And that's also because in this region, they do a lot of what we call lees contact, which means leaving the wine in contact with the yeast that have completed the fermentation, but they leave it on those and sometimes they'll stir them up even. Mm -hmm. And what happens is this beautiful, creamy sort of mouthfeel um, and sort of a breadth of texture, mm -hmm. right, on the palate. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's interesting about Chablis is that um, really, all of these wines go through malolactic fermentation, but this is not buttery at all. Not at all. I mean, the acidity just mm -hmm. crushes through, as you mentioned, tartaric, and right. and it's just a beautiful, clean slate in so many ways. Yeah, and that's because it is just such a cool region that even though it goes through MLF, as we call it, short for malolactic fermentation, mm -hmm. you don't get the same kind of buttery richness you do in warmer climates. Mm -hmm. It just sort of takes the edge off the, the acid, which if it didn't go through malolactic fermentation- Rip your enamel. Exactly. Exactly. It would it would be yeah. so acidic you wouldn't really want to drink it. But I can't help to always think with mm -hmm. Chablis, yes. food wise oysters, right? Because the Belmites, all the soil that's in in there, it's like yes. old uh, seabed, right? Exactly. So it's a, a natural pairing, a anywhere oysters from anywhere, uh, sea urchin. Uh, I mean, my yes. mouth's watering. Any of those kind of seafood tower effects you goes know, along with. I completely agree. You know what it's actually really good with is breakfast. If you're, oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes. If you're having, let's say, a decadent weekend, mm -hmm. you know, breakfast or brunch with like eggs or... A little bit of caviar on an omelette yes. with a little creme fraiche. Does magic with it's, this wine. It's perfect. Yeah. Well, cheers to the weekend. Cheers. I know what I'm Let's, doing. I'm counting the days. <laughs> cheers. cheers.